when someone's referring to me and they describe me as a man, it, it feels weird. Um, like, no, I'm not a man yet. I'm just a guy. I'm not old enough or I or have my life put together enough, but I am a man. I mean, I'm not a child anymore. So why does it feel weird when people call me a man? Happy Thursday, Shoeless Joe. It's P. Tony, your friendly Catholic vlogger. This is a response video to your video, What Does It Mean To Be A Man, that you published about a week ago. Uh, great topic. Thanks for bringing it up. It's been really good for me to ponder, and I just wanted to add a couple things to your ponderings that you started on your channel. But first, if we're gonna talk about being manly, I should be drinking a beer, right? Um, obviously. All right, um, also, let me just highlight some things that stood out in your video that you said. You said it feels weird to be called a man. Um, I find that very relatable. You talk about a major distinction between being a child and being an adult is the difference between spending time playing and spending time working. Um, and in society today, we don't have to work as much, it seems. In many ways, we can just be a continuous consumer, imbibing social media and luxuries and who knows what else, Netflix. Also talking about being a man, there's all sorts of like stereotypical manly skills, like a man is able to fix a car and do plumbing and is able to bench press 400 pounds. And obviously talking about manhood in those terms is a very limited way of talking about manhood. Um, and there's bigger and nobler things to look at, but also is there a grain of truth to all that? That was a good point to bring up. There is an attraction to having some of these more basic stereotypical manly skills and abilities uh and do i have those and should i have those a little bit more question mark if i'm not able to do those things does that make me worthless no i always have worth as a human being but you make a great distinction between worthless and useless <laughs> am i a useful person i don't know and obviously you and i both we have certain things that we're good at i mean everybody does right um for example you reference how you're good at making videos and yes you are um and you but you dismiss it as uh something that just comes naturally it wasn't a challenge for you and as men to be manly we feel a need to battle uh, to accomplish something there is something fundamentally attractive about being manly in more of a primal sense uh, and it's hard to capture that today and wow does that ring true with me those were the highlights for me from your video um, a lot to ponder a lot a lot to ponder I was pondering some of these things during Stations of the Cross last Friday, uh, and I thought specifically of three men that are in the story of Stations of the Cross. Uh, Pilate, Simon of Cyrene, and Joseph of Arimathea. How manly are each of these men? And here's my working theory. Um, what does it mean to be a man is an identity question. And when we're talking about identity questions, there's a temptation to to try to answer them through the things that we do. But I think that's a trap. I don't think that leads to happy endings. Instead, when we're answering identity questions, we need to go back to relationship. The only way we can appropriately answer identity questions is by looking at relationships in our lives. That way of thinking is not my original thought. Uh, I stole that from somebody else. I should really look up who. Um, but look up RIM. R-I-M stands for Relationship Identity Mission. Um, there's a lot of good material out there that talks about that if this piques your interest. Also, as I pondered, what does it mean to be manly? Um, I thought a lot of <laughs> this book right here, you ready? Interior Freedom, wait, like this. Interior Freedom by Jacques Philippe, it's a great book. And one point that Jacques Philippe talks about again and again is the idea of expectations. Expectations that we have of ourselves, that we have of others, that others have of us. Which ones are appropriate and which ones are not. And also, what expectations does God have of us and do we have of God? And I'm going to posit that being manly in a healthy way, even including some of those more primal aspects, means being attentive to what God's expectations are of me personally and strongly disposed to say yes to those expectations. What struck me in the Stations of the Cross about Joseph of Arimathea, Pilate, and Simon is that, well, each of these three men seem more or less manly. Um, Pilate seems very much less manly. Simon is the one that seems the most manly to me. And Joseph of Arimathea, he's kind of in between. Like, he's not a bad guy, but you know, 
I would shoot for a higher role model. And it's ironic because it runs counter to our sense that manly men are powerful. Because the most powerful of these three was Pilate. He had extensive judicial power, and yet he is the least manly. Joseph of Arimathea is a Pharisee, uh, but he has some religious authority or religious influence, if you will. Um, and he's the middle guy. And Simon of Cyrene is just a passerby. Um, and yet we remember him. And the early church remembers him and talks about his children. Like he has a legacy in the early church. Let's look at the, each of these men through the lens of expectations. What were the expectations that each of them had to fulfill? What are the expectations for Pontius Pilate? Um, the expectations are what he should do is defend the innocent, administer justice within his jurisdiction. And Pontius Pilate recognizes the innocence of Jesus Christ, and yet he does nothing about it. He doesn't defend the innocent. He allows for the verdict to be passed, to send the innocent to be crucified. Joseph of Arimathea, what are his expectations? Um, this is a little more vague, but Joseph of Arimathea is a follower of Jesus, though secretly for fear of the Jews, right? What does that mean? Like. If someone really follows Jesus, uh, how should that affect a person's life? Should it be visible? I'm gonna say yes. But Joseph keeps it hidden up until after Jesus dies. Um, and then he comes out and he talks to Pilate and he says, can I give, uh, can I give the body of Jesus a burial place? And it's unfortunate because he could have played a better role. I would think, you know, but since he waits until after Jesus is dead to finally act on on his belief in Jesus Christ, his moment with Jesus is after Jesus' death. <laughs> so he doesn't get the same time to spend with Jesus that he could have had. But you know, I mean, he does okay with what he has. Finally, there's Simon, and Simon he doesn't have much that he's able to do. He's just a passerby. He has no idea who Jesus is. And still, he's the one of the three that I would call manly first, that I would first call a man. He's forced to carry the cross with Jesus. And, I mean, he's forced, um, but he does it. So, so there. In other words, all that's put on Simon's plate is this very minimal thing of doing what he's being forced to do. And yet, that's enough. He fully does what's put on his plate, where the other two don't. He fulfills those expectations before God, and it bears fruit in his life. They talk about how since the Bible mentions the children of Simon, Alexander and Rufus, that heavily implies that Alexander and Rufus were a part of the early Christian community. In other words, that Simon and his family became Christians. So what does all of this imply? It implies that to be manly isn't a question of how much I am able to do. It's a question of how much do I respond to what God has put on my plate. It implies that if I feel a tug to be a more manly person, which I do now, thanks Joe, um, maybe that's an invitation from God asking me to pray a little bit. Maybe it's an invitation to turn to him and say, hey God, what are things that you've put on my plate that you want me to do in my life? I mean, not for me to do alone, for us to do together. You know, like being an instrument of God and all that complicated grace versus free will theology stuff. Those expectations that God puts on my plate, but in the long run, that's not what matters. Simon had the low bar expectations of those three men. What matters is that Simon met his expectations through the grace of God. And those are my thoughts. Um, that prompts me to do things that have been dug in on my heart that I've been ignoring for a long time. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll do that right after I finish recording it right here. It'll be great. Thanks for bringing up the subject. So um, this has been good for me to ponder. God bless you and ciao. For all my viewers, if you don't know who Shoeless Joe is, he's great. 
unsubscribe to him. I have alerts turned on. Um, I don't watch all of his videos, just the ones that like stand out to me. But whenever I watch his videos, I am never disappointed. Honestly, I should watch them more. Uh, but you know, time and life and everyone understands how that works, right? But please check him out. I put a link to the video I referenced in the description below. Uh, and while you're there, check out some of his other videos. He does great things. All right, that's all I got. Bye.